The 2012 season comes to an end here tonight. Short of expectations for the Indians, who had October aspirations to start the season. There were incredible highs. The Tribe sat in first place for 40 days this season and historic lows of 5 and 24 August, crushing hopes for a winning season. Now the year comes to a close with David Huff on the mound, pitching for a spot on the 2013 roster. And it's next on Sports Time Ohio. Tonight we close the curtain on the 2012 baseball season from Progressive Field. It's the Indians and the White Sox, game 162. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. At least going into this last game, the Indians will have some momentum coming off a, a big win last night in extra innings as Jason Donald delivered the Tribe with a game-winning hit in his final at bat. Well, he got a breaking ball off of Jones, who's had a terrific year, and he hits it down the left field line. That's going to score the run, his first career walk-off hit. You see Chisholm Hall scores. They go out. He was running into the pile. He thought he was playing football there for a minute. But Jason Donald, a big hit right there to end that ball game. And when you look at the Indians this year, 24-12 and 12 in one-run games. They were second in the league behind Baltimore. But in second games of series, you can see 15-37. and 37. When you look at Derek Lowe and Ubaldo Jimenez, they were 1-14 and 14 in the second game of a series. They didn't hit very well. And, you know, when you look at the series record, it's a, a really disappointing year overall. In that first half of the year, they really started out with the opportunity to win a lot of series. They just couldn't finish off the deal. It really makes me wonder if just looking at those numbers, is that something you can take? and go to spring training with next year and say, hey, we've got to work on this? I mean, how do you explain the the utter inability to win in the middle of the game of a I series? Think, I think one thing you take from it, you win a lot of the first game of the series like they did early in the year. You want to do that. You take that positive and try and preach that, and you then you work on those other two games. All right, let's take a look at our Nissan Road Ahead pitching matchup. One final time, it's David Huff getting the... Last start for the Indians. Well, and Huff, 3-0 and this year. He's gone out. He deserves an opportunity to pitch. Um, he's gone out with a changeup, a fastball, a little breaking ball. First time he's going to see the White Sox this year. So David Huff, 3-0 and on this season, facing Gavin Floyd, who's only pitched one time against the Indians. It was a win, but he gave up 10 hits in five innings. Get to an Nissan dealer for special offers on innovation that expects. It's the final game of the season, and we're back with the play-by-play action coming up next on Sports Time Ohio. Beautiful night here in downtown Cleveland for the final game of the 2012 season. 64 degrees under partly cloudy skies as the Indians and the Chicago White Sox close things out. On the hill for the Tribe tonight will be left-hander David Huff looking to run his record to 4-0 to finish off the season. And let's take a look now at Robin Ventura's starting lineup for the White Sox brought to you by Kia. 
Orlando Hudson will lead it off. He's at second base. Then Dwayne Wise and right batting second, followed by Paul Canerco, the DH. Diane Viciedo, Dan Johnson, Jose Lopez in the middle. Hector Jimenez will catch. Jordan Danks hitting eighth. And Ray Olmedo, the shortstop, bats ninth. Well, let's take a look at the uh, David Huff, the Indian start of the night. 3-0 at 286, earned run average, making start number four. He has not pitched against the White Sox this year. He did pitch once against them last year, 0-1. In his career, he is 2-1 against the White Sox in four games started. So we'll see if he can end it on a positive note and go 4-0 ending the season. Let's set the defense up behind Huff. It looks like this tonight. In the outfield, it's going to be Kanzler in left, Donald in center, Chu is in right. Chisenhall is at third, Phelps at short, Kipnis at second, Hanahan at first with Marson behind the plate. Mike Everett will call the balls and strikes. Laz Diaz at first, the crew chief Tim Welke at second, Paul Schreiber down at third. David Huff has really thrown the ball well. And you can argue, well, it's September, and we've always heard you don't read too much into September. But I think the one thing you can take away from this experience for David Huff is that, yes, it is September, and you do have to use that accordingly in your evaluations. But what you've seen from him, just purely from a pitching standpoint thing, is his fastball has been good. It's been above 90. You know, last year when he got into trouble, his fastball would dip below 90, and then there wasn't much separation between his fastball and his changeup. His fastball's much better, more life on it. The changeup makes that much more effective. I think he'll go to spring training at least with an, a fighting chance to uh, win a spot in the rotation next year. Well, I don't even think he was going to get a chance here until he pitched. He had two good outings out of the bullpen. That's a great point, Rick. He, wasn't, he was he was not point. slated to get a start. Then you remember that one game against Minnesota, he came in and retired 10 straight batters on 34 pitches. He pitched uh, two and two-thirds against Texas and gave up three hits. And the next thing you know, he's getting a start, and he, he's out of options. So this guy, he's taking advantage of the situation that was given to him this year. And whether it's September or whatever, he couldn't control that. He said he broke camp and uh, he was hurt or injured. So he's done everything he could possibly do. And he realized it's not up to him. Court Phelps at shortstop tonight, fields that cleanly and throws out Orlando Hudson for out number one. New look Indians defense out there tonight with Court Phelps at short and Jack Hanahan at first. <laughs> Game 162, that's what happens. <laughs> I think they might have drawn out a hat. Why not? Dwayne Wise, the right fielder, batting in the two-hole, three for 12 in the series, fouls it right back. Look, you and I both know that there is potentially so much that could happen between now and the time we reconvene next February or March in spring right. training. But, you know, based on the guys who are here right now, Huff, Kluber, McAllister, I mean, these guys are all young pitchers who have, Gotten opportunities. Huff, obviously, in years past. McAllister and Kluber this year. And, and and what we've seen is glimpses. We've seen flashes where you say, hey, there are positives. What we haven't seen is, uh, you know, the kind of consistency that would lead you to say, okay, this guy definitely fits here in the rotation. This guy fits there in the rotation. They're going to go to spring training next year. And, again, this who knows what may happen between now and then. But... Um, I think it's, it's it's all up in the air, you know. Every spot well, you don't rotation. have you don't have a, a, in my estimation, a number one or a number two starter on this staff. So I mean, you, sure, you're going to have to use them if you stay with what you have right now. No one stepped forward this year. They've had a couple of people take step backwards. So you know, Jimenez, he was uh, he was not good at all so far. He still leads the league in losses. And Justin Masterson threw the ball well last night, but he, in my estimation, took a step backwards. 1-2 pitch. A little bit outside, 2-2. Two and two. Swung on and missed, and David Huff strikes out wise, two down. Well, 
There's that fastball down and away. That's pretty well located. At the knees, 93 for the strikeout. Look at that beautiful night. The pink clouds up there as the sun's setting. Gorgeous way to close out this season as Paul Konerko wraps one on the ground and Jason Kipnis throws him out. And the White Sox go one, two, three. The Indians are coming to bed. We go now to the bottom of the first inning in the Indian starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Shin Su Chu leading it off, followed by Jason Kipnis and Lonnie Chisenhall. Russ Kanzler batting in the cleanup spot, then Travis Hafner, who hit his 200th homer as an Indians last night. And then Cord Phelps, followed by Jack Hanahan, Lou Marson, and Jason Dunn. Gavin Floyd is going to make the start tonight for Floyd. That'll be his 29th start. He is at 511 and 11. He has pitched one game against the Indians this year. That one coming back May 27th. It was a win. Five innings, ten hits, and five runs. Chu takes a look. It's in off the plate. Shin Su Chu playing in more games than any other member of the ball club this year. Game number 155 for Chu. And remember, he missed some time early in the season with a hamstring injury. But other than that, you know, he's been game day in and day out. Yeah, as many times as he's been hit this year, too. He's had a couple up there around the hands again. Chu has been hit uh, 14 times. That's outside. Two balls, two strikes. Bounce just foul up the first baseline. with 43 doubles tied for fourth in the league. And the 2 2 called third strike. And Chu lets Mike Everett know that he does not agree. But that is out number one for Gavin Floyd. Well, last night, that's what uh, Jake Peavy did. He started that might have been a little high, and I think that's what Chu's saying. That breaking ball is up there. But it's a breaking ball in the outside corner. It goes as strikeout number one. Now Jason Kipnis.
Out of play. We've sung his praises many times this year. Another guy, truly a gamer. 151 games played in the middle of the diamond. His first full season in the big leagues. And doing it at, at second base, which not his natural position. Came up as an outfielder. But uh, you know, he's worked hard to turn himself into a very good, and I would say very good above average defensive second I baseman. I think he's, he's learned a lot this year. He's going to take a lot away from this, and it's a, it's a good one to just sit back, reflect on, and build from there. Come back and have a better year next year. He'll lead the Indians and runs batted in. Well, he and Santana are tied. He need, needs one more. Grounded to second base where Hudson will throw him out. Let's take a look at the Home Depot Sox defense, the number one rated defense in the American League. Viciedo is in left, Danks in center, Wise in right. Lopez at third, Olmedo at short, Hudson at second, Johnson at first, Jimenez behind the dish. More savings, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. Lonnie Chisenhall swing and a miss to the ball down low. Well, it's all over in the American League West. What a comeback for the Oakland Athletics, the first team in baseball history to overcome a five-game deficit with nine games to play to win a division. And Oakland did that by crushing Texas. Texas led 5-1 to one in the fourth inning, and Oakland scored 11, uh, 10 straight runs, right? Was it 11 to 5 final? Uh, 12 to 5. So final. 11 straight runs they scored. Win it 12 to 5. Oakland champions of the West as Chisnall drills one in the right field, a base hit. And then he's aboard with two down. So Oakland wins the West. That means Texas is about to board an airplane. They'll fly east, but they don't know where they're going. They'll have to wait for the outcome tonight. If New York wins, they're champions of the East. And that means Texas will go to Baltimore. If Baltimore wins and New York loses, then Baltimore and New York have to play off tomorrow, right? Yes. And then they'll determine the Eastern Division champion and wild card that way. So Texas might fly all the way east and have to stop somewhere and wait. Think about that. I never thought about that aspect of it. That's going to be very weird. For the extra playoff team now, you have to wait right now and see. So the problem Good thing just, they played, they had to play a day game out there today then, just for this reason. I wonder what they will do. You have to wait and see. I would think they'll board and start heading back east. They're going to have to stay somewhere. That's got to be the traveling secretary's biggest nightmare. nightmare Absolutely. Right now. The only other option is. Sex eggs. You see wait. what he says. What do they do? The other option is you wait. See what happens, and then fly. And then you get home later. But if it's a playoff situation, maybe you fly home first, wait to see who wins tomorrow, and then you fly. I don't know. That, that's you're right. That's traveling secretary's worst nightmare. Two zero pitch. Although knowing Mike Seggy, they've probably worked out all these scenarios, you know, out one way or another. They probably have contingency plans based on any number of different scenarios. So. If it ended right now, this is the way it stacks up. But who knows what might happen. It's all settled in the National League. 3-1 3-1 pitch to Russ Kanzler. And it's ball four. So hitting a walk with two outs, and the Indians have two aboard now for Travis Hafner. Washington secured the number one seed in the National League today. So Washington will wait the winner of the one-game playoff between Atlanta and St. Louis. Meanwhile, Cincinnati will open postseason play against San Francisco. Oh, that's going to be a series there. The Reds in San Francisco. Wow. So that's all set. 
We'll keep you updated during our game tonight as to what's going on the, in the uh, American League situation. Baltimore, Tampa Bay underway, scoreless in the first. Here's Travis Hafner with two on, two out, and takes down an in-ball one. Boston has jumped out to a one to nothing lead over New York in the first inning in the Bronx. Hafner came off the bench last night and in dramatic fashion tied the game in the bottom of the ninth with a two-run homer right down the right field line. His 200th career homer as a Cleveland Indian. And you look at where Hafner ranks, eighth all time. The Indians, of course, hold an option on Hafner for next year, but if they don't pick up that option, there is a buyout clause. So that's something that general manager Chris Antonetti said that they will discuss and determine what they will do in the coming days. Bounce to first, and Johnson will take it himself, and the inning is over. No runs, a hit, two men left, and we are scoreless after one. Ball is brought to you by McDonald's Cherry Berry Chiller. Cherry and raspberry flavors blended with ice and 100% fruit juice. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T Rethink Possible. And by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Boy, it didn't take long for nightfall. Oh, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> Here's a pitch now to Diane Viciedo. Three for nine in the series. Couple of home runs, including a grand slam. First of his big league career. That came in the series opener. Last night, it looked like Viciedo had given the White Sox uh, breathing room to win it. That was before Hafner's dramatic homer tied it, and Jason Donald winning it with the base hit. One ball, two strikes. Tampa Bay takes a 1-0 lead over Baltimore, bottom of the first in St. Pete. Again, for the scenario in the East, Baltimore needs a win. New York must lose in order to force a playoff. If New York wins or Baltimore loses, Yankees are champions of the East. Baltimore goes in as the wild card. You really have to wonder what the mindset of that Texas Rangers ball club is now, though. Well, I'll tell you what. You talk about getting humbled. I mean, first, they they, they suffered one of the biggest collapses ever. You know, you cough up a five-game lead with only nine games to play and then get just well, waylaid today. They played them six out of the last nine games, and they, they beat them five times. Oakland did. So they have no one to blame but themselves. 
The walk to Vicieto will bring up Dan Johnson. 0 for 2 with two walks in the series. That's outside ball one. Huff delivers. And it's outside. Two balls, no strike. Two zero pitch and a called strike. David up fires it in there for a strike. Back out of play. High pop. That'll find the seats. Two balls, two strikes, and that's another thing that about David Huff that we have certainly taken notice of quick working throwing a lot of strikes yeah I mean that's what you like I, I wish he had a sharper breaking ball he hung a breaking ball right there and got away with it on the foul ball but you know for a left hander he doesn't have that big sharp breaker that some lefties a lot of lefties do it's a it's a straight fastball with a change up that is mashed deep right and way out of here Dan Johnson gives the White Sox a 2 0 lead in the second inning with his first home run with Chicago. Johnson's a guy that he can get after a fastball. And his last two pitches, even that breaking ball that I said he got away with and fouled it off, he didn't get away with his fastball here. Johnson hits his first home run. Give him a couple of RBIs. Watch the location of this pitch. Marson's sitting right dead middle, and that ball was belled high, middle in. And he gave it a ride. It's a third home run given up by Huff. For the White Sox, home run number 207, which is ranked third in the league. They've had a very good year with the long ball as a team. Five guys with 20 or more, of course, not in the lineup tonight. There's a pretty good belt by Jose Lopez, but not deep enough. And as Russ Kanzler hauls it in one away. Our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio GMC dealers. Well, you talk about how the Indians collapsed this year. Teams in first place on June 23rd or later since 1901. Right, look at the Pirates last year, too. I mean. Well, this year wasn't much yeah, better. I was going to say, it wasn't. It couldn't have been too much you know, better. The, the, the month of August, five wins. Five and 24 yeah. for the month of August is, uh, boy, that's, that was a, a, a crusher. An 11 a game losing streak, followed by a 9 well, game losing streak. Well, after we won that three game series uh, when they beat the Tigers, went out on that road and didn't win a game.
Missed outside. Three balls, no strikes. In the air, right center, Shinsu Chu in to make the catch, and there are two down. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned, making tires that go the distance, inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Couldn't ask for a much better night for the guys up in the yeah, limp tonight. Uh, no doubt about it. Barely a whisper of a breeze. And there's a ball out of play off the bat of Jordan Danks. Danks two for five in the series. Two and one to count. Jordan Dank's brother, John. Rough year for him. He went on the DL back in May. And then ended up with a shoulder surgery in August. A long road back for him. Dan Johnson gets the White Sox on the board first tonight with a two-run homer. And it's 2-0 Chicago middle of the second. No score, bottom of the second inning. Cord Phelps, Jack Hanahan, and Lou Marson coming up for the tribe. And Phelps hits one in the air, slicing down the left field line. Vicieto over to grab it. One pitch, one out. 
Let's go downstairs and hear from Katie with them. Well, Matt, Rick, 2013 season tickets are available right now. Call 216-420-HITS for more information. And if you're getting them, make sure to take advantage of that new program, Tribe Rewards. It gives you points to spend on memorable moments like coming here to the ballpark, throwing out that first pitch, or attending a pregame press conference. Season tickets available right now. Guys. Thanks, Katie. Jack Hanahan steps in. Hanahan playing first base tonight, 0 for 1 in the series. Had a pinch hit appearance. Fly ball to center field. Jordan Danks back a few steps. Two down. Tonight's injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Adam Greenberg struck out in his only at-bat last night. First plate appearance. Yeah, he was hit back in 05. You know, as a Cub, came against the Marlins. The Cubs decided they didn't want to give him a chance to come back and yeah. get an at bat. But the Marlins said, you know, maybe maybe they felt partly responsible, so they gave well, him the opportunity. I'll tell you what, I watched the highlights. It was pretty awesome because yeah. he had to. You know what? Is that bat came against R. A. Dickey? Oh, it was the knuckleballer, and he ended up striking out. It was really a pretty cool situation, and how Miami handled it. It was uh, it was really fun to see. And Dickey did take the loss in that ball game, but um, what a season he's had! Yeah, yeah, all all said and done. And then it's revealed really that he's pitched most Cy of Young. the season with a torn abdominal muscle that needs surgery. So you you couple that with the fact that he's won twenty games as an ERA of just over two. He is the most strikeout since David Cohn in the National League. He, I mean, that's he's, yeah, he's pretty impressive. Special. Yeah. He may walk home with the hardware. Who knows? I watched a great documentary, too, by the way, if you get a chance to uh, to see it. It was a documentary done by a couple of filmmakers a year ago on Tim Wakefield and R.A. Dickey. Just how different the knuckleball is and the, and the fraternity. And we had Phil Necro up here in the booth, and uh -huh. he's featured in this documentary as well. And that fraternity, well, that it's bond a, it's a small fraternity. between those guys is pretty special. Well, and it should be because only those guys know what you have to do to get out there and really – perform and throw that pitch now if i can only remember the name of that documentary <laughs> i think i've seen uh, a couple of clips from it oh, yes lou marson out looking the indians go one two three and it's the white Sox two the indians nothing as we go to the third Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time. Brought to you by Miller Lite.
And as we go to the third inning, it will be Ray Omedo, Orlando Hudson, and Dwayne Wise coming up for Chicago. I thought of the name of that documentary. It was hard to remember because it's titled Knuckleball. Okay. <laughs> I can see why you couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but it's it's it definitely worth a, a rental if you see it. But, uh, yeah, it was well done. Tim Wakefield, R.A. Dickey, and then there are a lot of uh, excerpts and interviews with the uh, other knuckleball other pitchers. Knuckleball pitchers, yeah. Ray Omedo will lead off here for Chicago. He was one for five in the series so far. Lines it right back up the middle. Second hit for Chicago. Leadoff man aboard for the second time tonight. Well, we're talking about David Huff getting his final start tonight and how well he's pitched so far. Justin Masterson was the lead dog in the Indians rotation this year. As Rick pointed out, there were ups and downs and more downs than ups. And with more on Justin, here is Katie with him. Well, Matt, Rick, I had a chance to speak with Justin Masterson today, and he told me the only consistent thing about his season this year was the fact that he kind of felt uncomfortable, like something was a hair off all season long. He said he was most thankful for the fact that he was healthy and able to take the ball every five days. He did not miss a single start this year, but he's really looking forward to a full off season. Remember, he had that uh, non-throwing shoulder surgery last year, so he was kind of rushed last season. He's got a full off season, and he just wants to get back to just – throwing well i mean i think uh you know with justin the, the one thing you look at is he's still you know in terms of pitching years he's still a young guy and he's still learning still trying to figure it out i suppose um well he's big he's strong he can give you innings he has good stuff it's a matter of taking that next step yeah you know when when belcher was here i really thought that this guy was going to take off you know, he, he made huge steps. When they first got him, they, nobody thought he was going to become a starter. You know, he's, he's in a bullpen. He's, he, he's proven he can be a starter. He has good enough stuff. If he could get left-handers, pitch him a little tougher, pitch inside to him, I'll tell you, the guy, he, there's no question in my mind he could win in the big leagues. He just loses it. He has lapses of concentration, and I don't know what causes that. I wasn't a pitcher. The 1-1. Right back to Huff. He'll go to second. There's one. Phelps relay. In time, a double play. Nicely turned by both David Huff and Cord Phelps. He's getting the start at shortstop tonight, even though he played only second base all year long at AAA. But he's he played shortstop. He came up as a shortstop, shortstop did he? Yeah. He was a shortstop when he came up. Huff makes a nice stab and get it to your shortstop and let him turn it. You know, the other thing, too, Rick, Ruben Niebel, the Indians pitching coach, said the one thing that, you know, he's tried to work with Justin on is getting him earlier in games to throw his breaking ball. You know, we've had games with Justin before where he's had starts where he, remember the one time against, was it Chicago or Minnesota, he threw maybe two sliders. Well, that was, was in a game where he didn't need to throw anything but his fastball, yeah. the one you're talking about there. But what happens, I think, sometimes is when you have success doing that, you kind of fall into a, well, I, my, I'm just going to go use my fastball more, and you get away from the breaking ball, and it still can be well, an effective pitch. Katie said he was a hair off, okay? Well, that means you got to pitch. You can't throw. You just can't go out there and throw. Every lineup is different. Every day, every start is different. Yep. You've got to go out there. One day you may be facing, uh, you know, let's say a White Sox lineup, you know, that's predominantly right-handed. Then you go back and you'll face somebody that's a left-handed lineup, you know, and everybody stocks the lineup. With left-handers when he pitches, they try, and they right. should if they have the opportunity to because he has a tougher time against them. So he has to pitch. And, he, you know, I'm not saying there's times he can go out there and you don't have to throw that slider for a while for the first couple innings. Establish that fastball. But then there's other times where now you're going to have to get into the left-hander, so you better get that established the, the, the slider early. Every game is different. He was good last night. We've seen Justin this year come out. At 94 to 96 in the first inning, I don't like to see him do that because he's too pumped up and his ball doesn't move like it does. It stays elevated in the zone. When he's 91 to 93, he's got sink. He seems to move it in and out better. He keeps the ball down a lot more. And when he gets ahead of you with two strikes and he throws that sinker, it's uh, it's tough to hit. It's tough to square up. Again, he's one of the leading ground ball pitchers in the league. He can get you the double play ball. 
So there's no reason why this guy can't win. Runner goes. Throw down by Marson. Not in time. Dwayne Wise with his 19th stolen base of the year. And Wise uh, picked the right pitch to go on. Well, and you know, I think the, the thing you said about Masterson is when he's got that good sinker working, when he's got that kind of movement, it's tough to square up. And yeah. movement is always you can't teach the that. most important thing right. for a pitcher. Yeah, it man. is. I mean, con- you got to control it. But sure. When he does, he's he's awfully tough to hit. And he doesn't miss starts. That's another good thing. I wish, I mean, just for me, my own sake, I wish he had a mean streak in him. He's too nice of a guy. You know, a lot of pitchers, you know, you get that. He's one of those guys you could talk to him on game day. You know, there's pitchers that they don't like. They get caught in their routine. You can't say a word. Justin, you wouldn't even know he's pitching. Hey, hi, guys. How are you doing? You know, everything's the same with him. I wish he would become a little meaner. Even if he didn't, you know, smile at everybody on game day and say hello, just don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Gunner go strikes out to end the inning. Back with the mean partner right after this. <laughs> Hank the crank. Two nothing White Sox on top, bottom of the third inning, and for the Indians it will be Jason Donald to lead it off. And Gavin Floyd misses outside for ball one. Fouled back. Yankees have come back to take a three to one lead over Boston in the third inning. Down in Tampa, the Rays still lead Baltimore one to nothing in the third. That's Daisuke Matsuzaka making the start against New York for Boston. What will most likely be his final start as a Red Sox. He's a free agent at season's end. And boy, you look back on it, Rick. With all the money Boston spent first to the Japanese team just to get the rights to sign him, and then yeah. the money they spent on his contract alone, that has not worked out very well for them. Well, that's the, the chance or the gamble you take. Right fielder Dwayne Wise. One down. League leaders brought to you by your Cleveland Akron area Lexus dealers. Miguel Cabrera closing in on the Triple Crown. Their game gets underway in about a half an hour. I'm sure the guys can tell us if he's in the starting lineup. It would not appear that he would be. 
He is. He is in the yeah. starting lineup. Okay. And he's already got it clinched. So they, they may hit him for an ad bat or two. He's already has it clinched. Josh Hamilton has already played, did not homer for Texas. Unless, now let's not get above ourselves, unless Granderson hits two or three home runs in this game. Yeah, how many is he behind? I think he's two behind. So he'd have to hit three to, to take the lead because even if he ties in home runs, you know, a tie still, still gives him yeah, the triple crown. He, uh, exactly. Yeah. So I'm saying yes, and I, I he's going to win the MVP as well. I think. Oh, that's a good point. And guys in the truck were just saying, if Baltimore and New York, if they have to play a one-game playoff, that's a regular season game. Yeah, I guess that's true. And the stats count yeah, the stats on regular count. season. So that's... for Granderson, for the home run, that would be the one you'd be Yeah, that's at. true. But. That'd be a hard way to lose it, wouldn't it? Chu tried to check, did he? Nope, he did not. Well, Schreiber said he went around, and that's the second time Chu has struck out tonight, and he hasn't agreed with either call. And Chu once again barking at Mike Everett, the home plate umpire. No, well, it's game 162 is what it is. He did go on the first one, but on that one I'll give him a break. And they got help from the third base umpire, and that's the one that rang him up. Jason Kipnis grounded out his first time up a swing and a miss. It's been, uh, I guess, a little surprising to me how many, you know, national baseball reporters I've heard on the radio saying that they, they feel like that MVP race is very, very close, too close to call. And that just, I, I recognize Trout's had a heck of a year. Yes, Incredibly he Incredibly impressive, especially for a rookie, what he's done. But for a guy who's on the verge of doing something that we haven't seen in 45 years, uh-huh. there's nothing more special. Dunk. Yeah, there's nothing more special than that, in my opinion. I mean, you got to go back to Carl Yastrzemski, 1967, and the year before that, 1966, Frank Robinson did it. And you know, I mean, get you on. Know. Nope. Danks makes a running catch, and the Indians go one, two, three, three in the books. It's Chicago two, Cleveland nothing. Chicago leading it as we go to the fourth inning. Diane Viciedo, Dan Johnson, and Jose Lopez do up for the White Sox. Final game of the season tonight. And 
And the postseason will get underway. And for those of you who uh, will watch the playoffs, whether your tribe's in it or not, there are going to be some exciting races to watch in, in the playoffs. And, of course, uh, as we wait to see whether or not there will be be the need for a one game playoff to determine the Eastern Division champ. Even if there's not, there's certainly intriguing drama with what unfolded today. Oakland overtaking Texas to win the AL West. The only day Oakland has spent in first place uh, uh, all alone was today, which is pretty, pretty amazing. But uh, Texas will go to a one game playoff with somebody. Whether it's New York or Baltimore is still to be determined. Yankees up 3-1, and if they win, then they have, what, home field throughout? Drive to deep left. It's over the head of Kanzler. Yes, that would give the Yankees the top seed. Here's the throw to second base, and sliding in safely, Viciedo. And Kipnis arguing there with the second base umpire, Tim Welke, that he made the tag in time. I think he's arguing that he slid right onto his glove backside of his glove and he got there in a hurry because Kanzler played it well he knew it was going to be over his head lets the ball come back to him nicely done now gets it in now watch the tag plenty of time where's the foot uh, his foot looked like it did hit the base first maybe uh, uh, Jason hit the other foot maybe the right foot so he goes in with the left and he's saying he got the right foot because it looked like that left foot got into the base yeah Lead off double. Dan Johnson, a two run homer, his first time up. And this Seattle this year has had a really good year against the tribe. Five homers, 18 ribbies. Out of play. Walked the first time and scored a run. There's been a number of guys, now that we think about it, in this division that have uh, done some damage. About 20 RBIs or more. You look at Morneau and you got Willingham, who had, what, 19 or 20 as well. Of course, Cabrera, and he does that to everybody. And Viciedo has 18. Five homers and 18. Way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Now, you know, some of those names that you threw out there are not guys that you go into a series and say, let's not let that guy beat us. Like, Diane Vicieta wouldn't be a guy you'd say, not in the let's White make Sox sure lineup, he doesn't beat us. Because you have Canerco, right. you've got Dunn that can hit the home runs, and but Vicieto has done damage. But certainly next year you would think when they go in to play Minnesota, Justin Morneau, they're going to have a, a red circle around his name. Like, let's... Willingham. Well, Willingham too, yeah. Johnson with a pop to center. And that is out number one as Viciedo holds at second base. Take a look at the AT&T trivia question tonight. Name the last player to lead the majors in average, homers, and RBIs in a season. All of baseball. So not just the respective league, but the ultimate triple crown, I guess you would call that. Lopez with a fly ball to deep left. Back goes Kanzler. Onto the track to pull it down. Out number two. 
Let's go back to the Hyundai Studios right now for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt. Hey, Rick. The Yanks trying to wrap up the East with a win tonight. They were down 1-0 here in the second. Curtis Granderson, a three-run homer, is 42nd of the year. That made it 3-1. to one. And then just now, Robinson Cano, a two-run homer in the third. 5-1 to one Yankees over the Red Sox, third inning. Matt? All right, Al. Could be a moot point then for Baltimore as they still trill Tampa 1-0 in the fourth inning. Orioles batting top half of the fourth. That means uh, if it stays like this, mm-hmm. uh, Texas would be flying to Baltimore. Chopped over the mound. Up the middle, and it's through. And coming around third to score is Vicieto. The throw to the plate, cut off by Hanahan. But he can't come up with it cleanly, and now down to second base goes Jimenez. So Hector Jimenez with a two-out RBI single, 3 nothing White Sox. Hanahan was a little late getting to the cutoff spot, and he tried to corral it, got leather on it. And once it skipped away from him, the runner just kept on going. Well, the ball, I mean, it jammed him. He just hit it perfectly right up the middle. You see that second hop really bounce into center field. Here comes Donald, an infielder by trade. The throw was fine. Uh, he hit the cutoff man. It's just that uh, Hanahan was, as you mentioned, late. It'll go as an error on Hanahan. Huff's curve ball. Danks lays off. One and one. Checked his swing, rolls it over to the Indians' dugout. Boy, pretty good looking pitch. Can't get the call. Two and two. Huff ready, the 2-2 pitch, and Danks following it back. Interesting, our uh, producer Jim Murphy telling us that should New York go on to win, then Texas could have to do a U-turn in the sky and head back to Texas because they would end up hosting Baltimore if Baltimore loses. But even if New York no, no, oh, but I'm, if I Baltimore loses, yeah, yeah, if yeah, Baltimore yeah. wins, they got to fly to Baltimore and play Baltimore That's right. at home because they have a better record. If Baltimore loses, so then right. they'll host the one-game playoff in Texas. So they truly are flying with nowhere to go exactly. <laughs> with nobody at the helm. We'll find out where we're going on our way there.
Home half of the fourth drive down three to nothing. Lonnie Chisenhall, Russ Kanzler, Travis Hafner do up. Swung on and missed. And Chisenhall with a shallow pop to center. Back goes the shortstop Omedo to grab it. One away. Our final minor league report brought to you by University Hospitals. Francisco Lindor, one of the prized possessions in the Indians farm system. Ultimately hit just 257, six homers, 42 ribbies, and 27 stolen bases. Russ Kanzler walked his first time up, checks, and he did not go. That's back out of play. Nice over the shoulder grab on the bounce Hansler swinging a miss one ball two strikes And he's out looking. Good breaking ball from Gavin Floyd. We haven't seen him much this year, Rick, but he looks pretty sharp here tonight in well, his final start of the he season. He has a good slider, and when that slider is working, he's awfully tough. Well, you can spend some time with the Indians uh, next spring out in Arizona. As a matter of fact, whether it's a week long or it could be a weekend trip, it doesn't matter. They will they have packages that will fit your schedule. Just call 216-420-HITS for all the details. Travis Hafner ropes it foul. One ball, two strikes. With two down and the base is empty here in the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> he went too far, and that's the fifth strikeout for Gavin Floyd. The Indians go one, two, three. And that is ten in a row set down by Floyd.
and Ease with 17 locations in Northeast Ohio. By Levin's, home of the Sealy Posturepedic Mattress made right here in Northeast Ohio. By Kia, Cleveland.com, and by First Merit Bank. Beautiful night here at the ballpark. Game 162, and the White Sox lead it 3 to nothing. And as we go to the fifth inning, it will be Ray Olmedo, Orlando Hudson, and Dwayne Wise. To third, diving stop, smothered by Chisinau, throw too high, and into the photo well. Boy, a nice stop by Chisenhall. He gets up and just overthrows the target. Wanted to get something on it, so. The first part of the play, very good. And then you'll see him get to his feet, and then he airmails it. No chance for Hanahan. It goes into the camera bay, so that'll go as an error. That's the second error for the Indians tonight. Orlando Hudson 0 for 2. Inside he missed for ball one. Up the middle. Court Phelps fires it over. One away as Olmedo able to move to third. Let's get the answer now to the AT&T trivia question. The last Major League Triple Crown winner. You got any ideas? Ted Williams maybe? I don't know. Mickey Mantle. 1956. Not a bad year, huh? Wow, 353. With 36 homers. That's some kind of impressive. Well, he was a special player. I wonder if Ted Williams was a major league triple crown winner, though, when he uh won his triple. How many did he win it once or once or twice a triple crown? I think once. I thought it was in 41. He didn't win the MVP the year he won it. Well, that's because DiMaggio had the 56-game right. hitting streak. Infield going to try and cut this run off. Out of play. Wise trying to hit it up in the air. And get himself a sacrifice fly. Ted Williams did it twice. Four, uh, 41 was the year he hit 400. He didn't win the Triple Crown that year. Okay. That's when DiMaggio got him for the, the MVP, fit, Okay. Though. But he won a Triple Crown in 1942 with 36 homers, 137 ribbies, 356 average. That's very similar. To the numbers we were just talking about with uh, Mantle. Mantle. He won it in 47 with 32 homers, 114 ribbies, and 343 average. Not going to do it. Pretty shallow in charging his Kanzler, but it's going to be Phelps, the shortstop, who grabs it two down. All right, so here we go. Asking you shall receive. Yep. Ted Williams did do it in 42. I was going to say his numbers look well. We don't have them up there, but his numbers from 42. Mantle had more homers, I think. Mantle had 56 homers. He had 52 homers. Williams had 36. So yeah, but the RBI is very similar, and the batting average very similar for those two guys.
The Indians have never had a Triple Crown winner, but they've had two guys who played for them that won Triple Crowns, Frank Robinson, of course, and Napoleon Lajouet, who won his in nineteen. Well, that goes to show you how special Philly. a Triple Crown is. That's guys that have won it in their respective leagues. You know, we talk about how rare a perfect game is and a no-hitter. Yeah, how about Triple Crowns? There's, Probably yeah, the more, you know what? There's more, more perfect exclusive. games now yeah. than there are Triple Crowns. So that's how special a year like that is. And we talked about well, we this, We have 23 too. perfect games now with the three coming this year, I believe. And we talked about this, too, Rick. You know, during your era, for example, you could have been a great power hitter, a great RBI guy, but with Rod Carew, you weren't going to win the batting title. Well, and, and in that era and shortly thereafter was Wade Boggs, and then Ichiro came over at the you know start of the 2000s, and guys that are hitting 350, 360. The one-two. Canerco yanks it deep down the left field line and gone to the home run porch. Paul Canerco with a two-out, two-run homer makes it five to nothing. White Sox. Yeah, he tried to sneak a piece of cheese by the rat and didn't work. Home run number 26, RBI 74 and 75 for Canerco. Canerco pulled the hands in and did a, a nice job of uh, hitting a fastball. I, I, I'm curious to see where that pitch was. They want it in. Look at, look at the hands come in, and the barrel head of that bat got out of here in a hurry. And 90, if you had 94, 95 on that pitch, you'd probably get in there, but 90 didn't do it. Now base hit between first and second. And David Huff. This guy continues his hot hitting against the Tribe. He loves the fastball. They call him the tank in Chicago. All the runs in this inning unearned because of the error by Lonnie Chisenhall. There's a long drive, and it is gone, gone again. Dan Johnson's second home run of the game deep into the White Sox bullpen. And the White Sox tee off on David Huff here in the fifth, tagging him for four runs. A pair of two-run homers. And it's now seven-zip Chicago. Well, he's a dead, dead red hitter, man. And you watch this one. This fastball here, we showed you that's right down the middle. 90 miles an hour. Doesn't cut it. Johnson for the second time tonight. A two-run homer. So Huff's given up three homers. Two to Johnson, one to Canerco. And we've got a 6 nothing ball game. 7 nothing. excuse me. That's Tony right. Sip, you saw up in the bullpen. Huff had 90 pitches on the night. But he's run into a buzzsaw after he had two outs in the inning here. And another hit. Jose Lopez. Finds a hole on the left side. So the inning stays alive. Just a matter of how quickly Sip can get ready. Because apparently Huff has just run out of gas.
They tell us that Max Scherzer is starting tonight's game for Detroit. Their final game of the year against Kansas City. You may recall Scherzer injured an ankle in the on-field celebration when the White Sox uh, clinched the, the division title against Kansas City. And it was doubtful maybe that he would make his final start, but he is in there for Detroit tonight. That's the fifth time in Dan Johnson's career he's had two homers in a ball game. And a line drive base hit. And the White Sox will bat around here in the fifth. Huff just cannot get out of the inning. And that is going to do it. So his final start of the season, a disappointing one, four and two thirds innings, tagged with seven runs on nine hits. And the White Sox will send the ninth man to bat here in the inning, and he'll be facing Tony Sipp when we come back. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. And our thanks again to the guys up in the Goodyear blimp bringing us gorgeous pictures of Progressive Field on a picture-perfect evening as we say goodbye to the 2012 baseball season. And here in the fifth inning, the Indians say hello to Tony Sipp for the 63rd time this year, a win, two losses, and an ERA of 453. Tony will face left-handed hitting Jordan Danks, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Sox with a couple of two-out, two-run homers. And then after that, back-to-back -back singles chasing David Huff from the game. And Danks looks at strike one. No balls, two strikes. Checks on a ball up high. One and two the count.
Down on the dirt. Tampa Bay extending their lead to 3 nothing over Baltimore. Orioles only have one hit in that game, and the yeah. Yankees still lead Boston 5-1 in the fourth. Well, let's say that stays where it's at, so uh, they that Texas would end up going home. They'd have half the flight if Baltimore continues to lose. Danks a swing and a miss. He strikes out, and the inning is over. But the White Sox bat around and score four to lead it 7-0. It's a 7-0 White Sox lead, bottom of the fifth inning. And for the Tribe Court, Phelps, Jack Hanahan, and Lou Marson. Well, again, the White Sox pitcher has allowed just one hit. Jake Peavy did that yesterday going into the ninth inning. That's right. Where the Indians had one hit, it was two solo home run. Well, there's certainly, uh, you know, when you look at the, the Indians and, and the offensive problems they've had this year, it's not a real big mystery what they need to address in the offseason. Now, again, we don't know what may or may not happen in the offseason. There's been a lot of speculation as to, you know, potential players that could be traded, you know, choose going into the final year of his uh, contract before he becomes uh, eligible for free agency. There's been a lot of speculation about Chris Perez, though Chris came out of his meeting with Chris Antonetti feeling like, you know, he's going to be here next him. year. Yeah. Hard to know. But, but you look at it, Rick, just look at it. If you, if you keep all that out of the equation, because we don't know what's going to happen. But left field, you got to find somebody who can play left field. Uh, you know, first base, you know, you got to find somebody who's going to man first base for you. And obviously designated hitter. Well, you got a DH, and also you got to you got to think about behind the plate as well. I know you're thinking, okay, we've got Santana back there, but defensively, I'm not sold on Carlos Santana. Cord Phelps grounds out one away here in the fifth inning. Well, okay, I'll give you that, but at least in order of most pressing needs, he's not in the top three. I wouldn't think. No, no, I I agree with that. But you know, you go out and you look now in free agency and how you can go about acquiring some of those guys. It could be, a, you know, it's a, a lean year. Yeah. For, let's say, left fielders, first basemen. Situations like, you know, players in that situation. You need you need a, a run-producing guy in the middle part of your lineup. And that's why the Indians power have... power-hitting 
RBI guy. And that's why the Indians have said, you know, they can't say there's anybody on their roster that's what you call untouchable because, right. you know, they've got to see what other people may be willing to give them for player X. And so they're going to have, you know, like you said, if the free agent market doesn't provide what they're looking for, you're going to have to explore trade avenues. It could be a very interesting off season. The 2-0. And Hanahan hits one high and slicing out of play. Certainly, you look west, and you see what the Oakland Athletics have done, and they've proven that, as Johnny Gomes said at best, who cares about big contracts? You know, they, they've done it in a different manner with you know, young yeah, players. uniforms great between drafting, the lines. Great drafting, great development. Trades. Good trades, shrewd moves. But teams like Oakland, well, Cleveland, and that market, you can't miss. You can't. They traded can't Gio miss. Gonzalez, who went on to win 21 games, what, with Washington? Yep. But what they got in return, uh, you know, certainly put a lot on the board for the A's. A lot of pieces. The 2-2. Two, two. In the air to left, back goes with Seattle. Two away. The Taco Bell Browns red zone returns tomorrow night at 8. Andre Nott and Mary Kay Cabot. And we'll take your calls and emails as the Browns get ready to face the New York Giants. It's the Taco Bell Browns red zone tomorrow night at 8 right here on STO. Gavin Floyd's only made 65 pitches to this point. 41 of those have been strikes. And he's fallen behind Lou. Three balls, no strikes. He walked one back in the first. That was Russ Kanzler. And now a full count. Filed away. And Lou draws a 3-2 walk. Keeps the inning alive with two down. Now Jason Donald, who flied to right his first time up. It's in the dirt for ball one. (laughs) 
bang foul third base side. And the 1-1 one -one is outside, two balls and a strike. Yankees still up 5-1. to one. They're in the fifth inning in New York over Boston. Tampa Bay down 3 nothing to Baltimore. Down in St. Petersburg, Florida. Baltimore needing a win and a Yankee loss to tie for the top spot in the East and force a one game playoff doesn't appear likely that that's going to happen but there are still four innings left in each of those two games how about those uh, people down in Tampa last in the the league in attendance they've averaged 19,272 down there in Tampa Donald strikes out looking it's really really disappointing for that franchise for those players here it's disappointing because the Indians are losing seven to nothing to pick up your Wahoo Bucks $5 discount coupons for the Subway Extreme Fan Zone to an upcoming home game. It's the place to be for a chance to win Subway gift cards, Indians fun money, and get great discounts on your next Subway purchase. Subway, where winners eat. Seven to nothing in favor of Chicago. And we're moving on now. To the sixth inning. Ray Olmedo will lead it off and flies the ball to center field. One away. Don't miss Sunday Strategy presented by Audi Bedford. Jim Donovan, Doug Deacon, and Tony Grossi return tomorrow night to break down the Browns matchup with the New York football giants. Sunday Strategy tomorrow night at 7 right here on STO. All right, so let's start with the National League. You've got Atlanta and St. Louis in a one-game playoff. Who do you like? Wow. Well, I'm thinking if Atlanta pitches that meddling uh, kid, i got to go with him. He hasn't lost in uh, a long time. 20-some starts. 
What's it since 2010? They've had a nice year. So I, I, I if I got a pick, I'd say Atlanta. Atlanta. I'd go with St. Louis just because of the, the players, the guys with the experience that have been there, played in clutch situations. But it's yeah, one game. Who knows? None of these guys have been. That's the in only many one disheartening game thing that deals. I don't like about the extra wild card team is that it's a one game in you yeah. know win or go home. And I, I wish it was a three game series, but it's not. So all right, let's go with you though. Okay, so Atlanta wins, then Atlanta goes to face Washington. Yeah, who do you luck. like there? Boy, oh boy, how can you not? Just ride the Washington, Washington wave, right? Well, the way they've been playing all year. You know, it takes some time. They don't have Strasburg that's going to be in there, but they do. They have some solid pitching. That's a good team. Yeah. It really is. That that would be a good series. I think the big series to watch is San Francisco-Cincinnati. All right, that brings me to that series. Cincinnati with 97 wins going into the night. San Francisco, 94 wins. They held off the Dodgers, all the moves, the big trades, right. the noise the they Dodgers They played made. better after Giants. Cabrera, you know. They lost Melky Cabrera, right. who was leading the league in hitting. And they Posey uh, picked it up a little bit from behind the plate, didn't he? And a subpar year from Tim Lincecum. Yeah. And you know what? I, I that If I had to pick it, I'd go Cincinnati. They've been pretty good all season They've long. Pretty great. consistent. I've Steady been told as she that goes. They're, they're probably one of the best teams out there. Bullpen, solid. Yes. Chapman at the back end. Oh, throwing my hundred. Yeah. Johnny Cueto, yeah. You know what's interesting about San Francisco is, you know, the forgotten guy, Barry Zito, who's sort of resurfaced. I think he's won his last seven starts or 7-0 and oh down the stretch. They don't have... Uh, the guy at the back end, the beard, though, you know, he's yeah. out. That's the one thing that scares me about San Francisco. They've got a nice team. I really like the ball club. I think they're well managed. Um, they just don't have that closer, and Cincinnati does. And when you get into a series like that, you certainly need a great bullpen. So you think Cincinnati, potentially Washington, the brawl for it all? Who do you like to go to the World Series if it gets to Between that? Between Washington and Cincinnati? Yeah. I'm going to stay with Cincinnati. All right. American League, even though we're not uh, there yet, but it looks like New York's going to win. They're up 7-1. Boston, they're headed for their 93rd loss of the year. I don't think they have a miracle comeback in them. So let's say the Yankees win the East. That means Baltimore and Texas in a one-game playoff at Texas. I'll take Texas. Think they can bounce back from everything? Yeah. I Yes, I do. All right. That would send Texas on the New York uh, to New York. Rangers, Yankees. Whew. Boy, the Yankees get the number one seed. Don't exactly get a free pass because the Rangers, even with the struggles they've had, if they get it right, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I may take Texas in that series too. The one thing, though, the Yankees have always had Texas's number. Now, I know that's different teams in different eras. They but haven't the last two years, uh, you know, who's been in that World Series. That's true. Two years ago, they, they, they beat the, the Yankees. Okay, so that brings us to, to Detroit Oakland and, and Oakland. And Detroit. Well, now I'm, i got to go with Oakland. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going with Oakland. Just the way they've been playing, it's, it's a great story. I'll take Oakland. Although you know, I know you got to go up, and they got to face Verlander, and then Scherzer's pitching, and you got Fister, and they've got the Triple Crown winner. I, I just, I'm just riding the emotion of today. That's all. But I just think too, Oakland's one of those. I think Detroit uh, with their players could beat them, but I got to ride the wave. I mean, Oakland's like that team, like they're playing with house money, and they they're like whatever. They're hot at the We're... right time. They won the last six, six straight. They play as though they don't have a care in the world. And they that don't is right tough now. to beat in the postseason. Yeah, if it continues like that in the postseason. Yeah. If that attitude does. Melvin's done a great job there. Yeah, Melvin. Yeah, I'll go group. with the okay. – I'd love to see Oakland, Texas the, in the uh, and then? ALCS. Oakland and Texas again? Yeah. Wow. I know. That would be fun. I sure would. So that's what I'm pulling for. And then an Oakland Cincinnati World Series. Why not? Like back in uh, back in the day, yeah. More back in the old days in the seventies. All 
All right, folks, so there you go. You won't have to watch the postseason. <laughs> We've broken it all down. Well, it's, you know, you could sit down and yeah. break it down and do whatever you want to do, but um, it, it's it's going to be fun to watch. The 3-1. In tight ball four. So the inning continues. And that will bring up Diane Vicieto. First, our game recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. All White Sox tonight. Dan Johnson with a two-run homer in the second. Quickly made it 2 nothing Chicago. Picked yeah. up another run on the fourth and then on the fifth. Paul Konerko hit a two-run shot. And then two batters later, Dan Johnson yeah. hit another two-run shot. Too many fastballs and uh, not good locations. Find out about more than 30 Toyota offers available now at buyatoyota.com. No balls, two strikes. This Yato strikes out and the inning is over. Middle of the six, seven, nothing, Chicago. All right, we're back here, bottom of the sixth inning. And the White Sox on top, seven to nothing. Top of the order for the Indian, Shinsu Chu. He's had two at bats tonight. And if this one doesn't turn out better, he <laughs> might get tossed from the game because the first two, he didn't like the, the calls by the umpire, home plate umpire, and then the third base umpire. Thought the first one was high, thought the second one he didn't swing. Chu with a big chopper in the hole. He wasn't going to put it in the umpire's hands this time, but Hudson flips it over one away. Here's our great clip of the year. As Dribble Cabrera's walk-off homer off a rolled as Chapman. 
And interleague play, great clips. It's going to be great, certainly. It was one of the highlights of this season coming off one of the top closers in the National League. We just talked about him a couple of moments ago. He's a real asset at the back end of that Reds bullpen. But on that night, as Dribble Cabrera got him for a game winner. Jason Kipnis, 0 for 2 on the night. You know, he went on and struggled for a couple of games after that. You know, appearances that he went in there, but then he settled in and got back to normal. The one two down on the dirt. He's been getting the two strikes and trying to bury that slider into everybody left handers right handers it doesn't matter. A full count. And a base hit in a right field for Jason Kipnis. And the Indians have a one out base runner here in the sixth, just their second hit of the night and their first since Lonnie Chisenhall's single in the first inning. Well, he got a fastball down, and then he got one down there last night and got a nice base hit on, too. He likes that ball down and in. Typical left-hander, lined it into right field. So only the second Indians hit. You know, that home run by as Dribble Cabrera just kind of jogged my memory. You know, you think back, the Indians swept that series from Cincinnati. And now you've got Cincinnati going to the World Series. That just tells you how crazy the year went from the Indians sweeping well, Cincinnati here at home. They were in first place after that series, went to Houston. We've talked about this a number of times. Lost two out of three to the Astros. And the season really started to spiral because they fell out of first place and never got back. Well, and th th another series I want to talk about uh, now that you're on it is, is on that trip when we went to Houston, then to New York, and then we went and won three out of four from Baltimore. Yeah, and I mean, that team. could have been a horrendous trip. I, I looked at Baltimore back then and said, my goodness. I said, boy, I don't think, how are they this good? I mean, they were playing pretty good at the time. And I'm thinking, oh, there's no way they can hold up. But, boy, did they turn it around. I mean, because the Indians went into that ballpark. I think they had, like, 58 hits, 40-some extra base hits in that series. It was They hit the ball all over the it ballpark. It was probably their best offensive series of the year when you consider, Rick. They, it was. They win the opener 7-2. to The only game they lost, they lost 9-8. to Then they win 11-5 to and 6-2. to Yeah, and they, yeah, they... They hit the ball better in that series, and they faced three left-handers in that series. And then they came home right before the All-Star break, took two out of three from the Angels. Mm -hmm. And, then and Tampa should have won in. three out of four from Tam Tampa. Tampa came in in a four-game series right. They lost that last game seven to six game they had. They had it six to four or something like that. And Chris Perez, Perez yes. had, a, had a meltdown, and they got him. But... Uh, yeah, and then, of course, we all know in the second half it was just. Uh, but, I mean, when you sit back and you look at little series or games and things that turn around and, you know, you have to do that all year. Right. I mean, you have to do that all year. There's certain games, and, and we say this every year going into spring training or coming out of spring training. Look, you're going to win 60. You're going to lose 60. That's a given. It's what you do with those other 42 games that really make a difference. And I'm talking about as a team. This this is an organization that they have to start playing more as a team. 
Well, our numbers at the open. You know, talked about the numbers in the opening game of the series. Middle game of a series, horrendous. Yeah. And, I mean, when you win an opening game of a series, if you can win one out of the next two, you win the series. That's every team's goal going into that. Win two out of three. Win two out of three, move on. Of course it's not going to happen, and you're going to go through streaks, and you're going to go through slumps, but every, every team does it. But too many times the, this team would win the opening game of a series, and then in game two they lose the next. They have no chance. I mean, yeah. they'd score one run, and or you know whatever the case would be. They, well, they they, lose, they would lose them. the next two. That's the way it yep. went. Yep. Russ Kanzler has walked and struck out. Two two count, and he sends a fly ball in the center field where Jordan Danks will make the catch. Six in the books. The White Sox seven and the Indians nothing. don't feel like breaking out these this winter and would much rather wear this then join us in Arizona for spring training this year it's going to be here before you know it and no matter what your schedule is the Indians have a trip that will work for you whether it's just a weekend getaway or an all-inclusive spring training trip that would include a player meet and greet the Indians have a deal for you it's online right now Indians.com it's going to be a blast so make sure to check it out Matt Rick back over to you guys Katie quit trying to get your winter clothing uh, assembled for the off season the hat the jacket i want to know who's going to wear a foam hand to spring training she will <laughs> keep her hands warm that's her that's her way of getting gloves she's got big hands <laughs> big hands johnson <laughs> yeah. unbelievable we're going to see her on the slopes with cleveland indian gear on with big giant red hands wrapped around the ski poles Here's Dan Johnson. Two, two run homers in the ball game. This time he pulls it on the ground to first. Jack Hanahan will flip it to Seddon for out number one. Seventeenth appearance for Chris, who's worked primarily out of the pen. Bounce to third. Off the glove of Chisinau. He recovers, fires to first, and Hanahan couldn't come up with it. So bobbles on both ends that time. I still think it's going to be on Chisenhall overall. He didn't catch it cleanly. And then by the time he throws it, I'm not sure if he pulls him off the base. He does not. We'll see who they give it to. 
Base hit. Okay. Jose Lopez says thank you very much. His second hit of the night. And now a blooper right field fair ball down the line it goes chew over to cut it off. Lopez will stop at second. And with two on and one out. That'll bring up Jordan Danks. Let's go back to the Hyundai studios for another in game update with Al. All right, Matt, the Yankees have broken this one open now in the bottom of the fifth inning. Robinson Cano, his second home run of the night. It's another two-run blast, and it puts the Yankees ahead 7-1 to one over Boston. They're now in the top of the sixth inning at Yankee Stadium. Matt? All right, thanks, Al. And Tampa Bay blanking Baltimore four zips, so looking a little more and more like the Yankees will secure the Eastern Division crown, sending Baltimore to Texas for a one-game playoff. Evan Longoria has hit three solo home runs for Tampa Bay. Tonight. Wow. What is it about the last day in Longoria yeah. hitting a homer? <laughs> you know, we keep track of opening day home runs. People are going to have to start keeping track of the last day home runs. Man, Dan Johnson, remember he was part of that last, wasn't he part of that last year? Who he, he was. He, didn't he tie it? Yeah, he hit the tying hit run. The tying yes, homer. he did. So there's three for him. Good call. In the dirt. Of course, that'll be interesting, too. I mean, it's only one game, so the media won't have a lot of time to hype Good. it up and build it up, but... Buck Showalter returning to Texas, bringing Baltimore in there. Well, there's a lot of good stories around this year. Tommy, why don't you come down and jump on the mic with us? Will you please? I, I can't hear he's you well a, enough back he's there. He's chatting tonight. Yeah, it's the last day. He's going to miss us. <laughs> like the flu. 2-2 two, two pitch is outside a full count. Just let him sit on headset. He can tell us anything he has to today instead of writing it down with his crayons. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> They'll give him a headset. He'll have direct access to your your earpiece. 3-2 pitch. In the dirt. And a ball for Walk to Danks. Lopez to third. Jimenez to second. Bases loaded one out. Here's another great play of the season. Remember this one. Wasn't that long ago. Jason Donald letting it all go here. Into the seats, tumbled over, hold, held on to the catch. Yeah, he sure did. Got a lot of grief from the fans. Well, what are you going to do? He was going over there to make the catch. Yeah. And did make a, a nice catch going into the seats. Don't have to worry about it out there in center. Chopped to short, could be two. Phelps to second for one. Kipnis relay. Got him, double play, inning over. The White Sox load him up, but Seddon gets a two for one ball. To minimize the threat. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic's free walking program. Let's move it Mondays at Progressive Field in the Metro Park Zoo. Visit letsmoveit.org for more information.
Bottom of the seventh inning, and we Thank get a look in from our Panini's camera. Stop by and get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. For the Indians, Travis Hafner, Cord Phelps, and Jack Hanahan do up. Gavin Floyd, six shutout innings. He's given up two singles on the night. He's walked one and no, he's walked two and struck out six. Up high, two balls, no strikes. With all the publicity generated by the offseason signing of Albert Pujols, it's been a disappointing year for the Angels. We're playing out the string tonight in Seattle, and Eric Wedge and the Mariners are going out in style tonight. They lead 12 to nothing in the seventh Well, inning. back then when you think, uh, you know, the moves that are made in the offseason, whether it's November, December, January, you just can't hand people. Pool yeah. holes, C.J. Wilson, everybody said, well, the there Angels are going to win the going West. They're to the World yeah. Series. They're going to win the West. You know, nobody ever talked about Oakland. They weren't supposed to do anything. And anybody who said they would pick them for the playoffs is out crazy, just <laughs> downright crazy. That's what makes it so great, the, the story so great. You have to play the 162-game schedule. I don't care. You can put a team of all-stars uh, together, but you have to play the games. I know people thought highly of Washington coming into this year, but I don't remember too many people picking them to win. I'll tell the you, division. I'll tell you who did. Davey Johnson did in spring <laughs> training. He believed he was going to do it. Loops to left field on a base hit for Travis Hafner. The Indians get their third hit of the night as Hafner leads off the seventh with a base hit to left field. Cord Phelps 0 for 2 on the night. He has flied out, grounded out. And a pitch down low, ball one. Two and zero. The count on Phelps. Brian Omagroso getting loose for Chicago. Gavin Floyd closing in on 100 pitches for the night. He's at 97. Phelps pops it in the air to center field, and Danks will make the catch one away. Here's our Ford highlight reel on this date in 1995. Tony Pena, game one of the postseason against Boston. 3-0 count. Just got over. And that was very late in the morning, or early in the morning, I should say. 13th inning? Yep, 13th yeah. inning. Two o'clock in the morning. Kind of a light drizzle falling on and off at times that night. Double play ball to short. To second for one on the first to double play. And we'll go to the eight. Seven nothing Chicago.
authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum down on the lakefront. Here at Progressive Field, Chicago with a 7 0 lead as we go to the eighth inning. Top of the order due up for the White Sox. Well, as we wind down our coverage of the 2012 baseball season, and certainly it's a been a pleasure and certainly a lot of fun again to work alongside you, Arch. And uh, certainly we can't do it without a host of oh, people. Oh, my goodness. You're exactly right. A big team here. Yeah, very, very much so. And everybody is, uh, you know, you, folks at home only see you and I. They don't get to see the score of talented people behind the scenes that make it work every single night for six months during the season. And, of course, we have to start at the top. President of Sports Time Ohio, Jim Liberatore. Executive producer, Pat Kilkenny. Coordinating producer, Steve Warren. Each and every game directed by Jim Murphy. Directed by Pat Murray. Seddon will take that and throw out Orlando Hudson one away. Technical director is Dan Larson. EBS operators, Mike Simons, Matt Weber, and Steve Bardo. They bring you all the replays and... How many hundreds of thousands of replays do they put together during the course of a season? Mike Pachta, he does all the graphic work, but he's also our our conscience on a lot of these broadcasts. He's got all the historical facts at his fingertips. Font coordinator Bob Zink. Lance Zink operates the score bug. Pre-game producer Mike Bachman does a terrific job night in and night out. BTL. The guy that brings you all the sounds around the ballpark, Bill Schnack. Oh. Mike Grignon and Melissa Van Meter. Every team needs a utility man. God does a little bit of this, a little bit of that, fills in, and that's Mark Koha. He does a terrific job as well. Our statistician extraordinaire, Tom Boschenik. And on occasions. Teflon Tom, without a doubt. On occasions when he can't answer the call, Jeff Gears fills in. The amazing Kreskin. And on the even rarest of occasions that one of those two is not available, John Kreepop will sit in the chair. Yes, indeed. 40 years of Long service here. press box attendant. There's a liner to left field. And a base hit for Dwayne Wise. With one out here in the eighth inning. Stage manager Gary Coach. He keeps everybody in line. Also known as the captain. Of what, I don't know. <laughs> and of course back at sports time ohio kelly myers keeps everybody scheduled right and all the requests that we have during the season she takes care of everyone looks like sandy alomar is ready to make a change chris Seddon's night is over frank herman's coming on when we come back
Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. wonder if they're going to be heading on their way back down to Akron tonight after this shot here. Yeah. Take it to the hangar. See if they can beat Tommy Bow down 77. Great job, guys. Thanks, as always. Tremendous job from up in the skies. Here's Frank Herman, 15th appearance of the year. He'll be facing Paul Konerko, who hit one of three Chicago home runs tonight. Just a few more thank yous uh, tonight. Of course, the Indians media relations director, Bart Swain, Court Berry trip, help us out with statistical information on a nightly basis, and we appreciate their efforts all season long. And last and certainly not least, the men and women who bring you the pictures each and every night on Indians baseball. We've got a host of extremely talented camera operators. Yeah, the best in the business, at least that we see. Matt Wadowski, Mark Hug, Robert Benny, Mitch Madden, Frank Schubert, Jeannie Anderson, Igor Klobos, Jimmy Orak, Kerry Kems, Joey Gamalo, Johnny Gorsica, Chris Madden, and, of course, Brian McDermott. They all do exceptional work each and every night, and we thank all of them for their contributions during the season. One on, one out, and a one-two count for Paul Konerko. Up the middle. Phelps will flip it to Kipnis on to first. An inning-ending double play. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Seven-nothing, Chicago.
Lou Marson fouls it straight back. Foul right back. Strike three called. Marson is out looking. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. And on this date in 1951, it's the shot heard round the world. Bobby Thompson. Game-winning homer for the New York Giants. Look crushing the hearts of the Brooklyn Dodgers. And forever in baseball lore. One of the greatest plays ever. And and it triggered such a intrigue and mystery for so many years. You know, there was uh, accusations that the Dodgers were stealing signals and that maybe Bobby Thompson, or that the Giants were stealing signals, and that Bobby Thompson knew the pitch that was coming. Of course, he said hogwash, you know. But, uh, well, even if you know what's coming, you still, still have to hit, hit it. it. Yeah. Shin Su Chu, one for three on the night. A bigger pardon. 0 oh for three on the night. Jason Septimo uh, warming up for Chicago. Chu fouls it back out of play. Line right back up the middle, and Chu will finish with a base hit. And is one for four tonight. We'll have him at 283 for the year, and that gives him a new career high 13 game hitting streak. Well, that'll way to end it right back up the middle. It's only four hits for the Indians. All of them have been singles. Big chopper to first. Foul ball. Rip foul again. Count stays. 0 and 2. Mm -hmm. 
Once again, the 0-2 pitch. And Kipnis drives it to deep right field. And it's over the head of Dwayne Wise. That'll be a double for Kipnis. And stopping at third is Chu. Had Kipnis been able to drive home Chu, he would have ended the season as the Indians' team leader in runs batted in. But with Chu unable to score, that means he'll end the season tied with Carlos yeah. Santana with 76 runs batted in. Well, he got an 0-2 pitch to his liking. It'll go as our McDonald's I'm loving. He drove it. That's a not a very good 0-2 pitch. He left a fastball up middle of the plate and hits it over the head of Wise. And I thought uh, Chu was going to score, but uh, Smitty holds him up at third base. Looks like Robin Ventura going to make a pitching change here. He's going to go to a left-hander. We've got a timeout with two on, two out on the eighth in the Tribe, down seven. Seven nothing Chicago. Indians have two on with two out, and Lonnie Chisnall will be coming up against Lason Septimo. Now the lefty coming on. They're going to try and keep the Indians off the board and keep a zero on it. If you're the White Sox, but Chisnall is going to have an opportunity here with two outs now. After Chu got a base hit, Kipnis had a two out. Base hit an 0-2 uh, double. So now they can at least get on the board here. Lonnie one for three. He singled back in the first. Broke his bat. Rolls it to short. Lopez cuts in front. The third baseman throws to first, and they just did get him. So, eight complete. Still 7 0 Chicago.
Well, welcome back. 7 nothing White Sox here, top half of the ninth inning. Here tonight, you're going to get the box score. Your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealer. We invite you to come see the 2012 Sonata. Visit NorthernOhioHyundaiDealers.com today. And it's going to be a White Sox box score. They have the two-run home run ball was the order of the night for the White Sox. Johnson had a pair of them. Canerco had a two-run homer. Vinny Pistano will come on now and pitch the ninth. Viciedo, Johnson, and Lopez do up for Chicago. Rick, I think the next several days will be very interesting for the Indians organization and for the fans who will be watching very closely. You've got Sandy Alomar, who will interview formally tomorrow. Right. And then Terry Francona, who will interview formally on Friday. Deep right field, choose back. He's out of room. It's out of here. Diane Viciedo with his third hit of the night and his third home run of the series. And Chicago now leads it by a score of eight to nothing. This guy, it shows you the strength. He can hit a fastball. And now just watch the carry on this. You thought it was going to be a, a routine fly yeah. ball for Chu, and I'll tell you what, he runs out of room. That is strong. Dan Johnson's hit two two-run homers here tonight. And right now they ended the season with 210 homers as a team. Chris Antonetti has said that there, there could be other candidates, but primarily those are the two guys they're focused on. I don't think they need any more, really. Uh, I agree to with you. To be honest with you, and it's... Uh, it, you know, I think they should have a really good idea on Sandy Alomar by now. He's been here, you know, the bench coach. Going through the formal interview, I guess. I guess you have to. Johnson just hit his third home run of the game. Wow. Oh, man. Is and he I'm... going home in grand style? Dan Johnson with a three-homer game, so he's equaled. His old teammate, Evan Longoria. Yeah. And he's he actually surpassed him because he has more RBIs. John Longoria's hit three solo homers. Johnson, three homers, and five runs batted in. Wow. What a night. I mean, this is a line drive. You could tell by the crack of the bat. All three fastballs, and I mean, they are all gone in a hurry. Look at that thing fly out of here. It's 9 nothing Chicago now. And now Jose Lopez fouls one back. Well, that makes Jeff Manto smile, the White Sox hitting coach. White Sox, for the better part of the month, struggled to get any kind of clutch hitting, which is a big reason why they fell short. And Detroit surpassed them to win the Central Division. But they've had a couple of big games offensively in this series. Last Sox to homer three times in a game was Carlos Quinton, who did it May 24th last year. Yeah, I agree with you, though. Those those two candidates, uh, you're not going to get any better than, than those two, and they'll both interview in the next two days. And uh, I know Chris Antonetti would like to have a decision and get it done quickly. So yeah, that you a lot can of move work to forward, be done. you know, get your staff in place and start the business of getting things turned around. And if that guy is Sandy Alomar Jr., then you know, certainly they've got great familiarity with him. He has great familiarity with the organization. But, you know, Sandy, to his credit, he's a classy guy all the way around. He has said himself, hey, Terry Francona has tremendous credentials. He's got two World Series wins. and. If they pick him, I certainly Sandy understand. Sandy grew that. up in the game of baseball with his dad, with his brother Robbie. I mean, he, he knows he's he's a true pro, man. And when when you look at me or tell me Sandy Alomar, I think Cleveland Indians. You know, he came over here. This is where he was born and raised, and I'm sure he he would love it to death to get that job. And I, and I hope he does. 
but it's all part of a process, and he understands that. And uh, you just have to wait to see. The Indians' uh, brain trust, they have to make the decision yeah, on now, what goes on. Right. And, and Sandy, in, in speaking about Francona, saying, hey, he's a great candidate. He's got the credentials. But he also says, but I feel like I'm ready. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm ready and I can do the job. So you know he's what? not, he's he, not every, conceding. Everybody, but. you need your first opportunity. And this is not an opportunity. Six games into the season is not an opportunity to manage. You know, this was thrust upon him after the firing of Manny right. Acta. So, right. you know, he got a, He didn't even get a chance to put his straw in the drink, you know, to take a sip. But, you know, I'm sure he's learned something from the six games here. Absolutely. Every day on the job, as you know, Rick, you know, all the years you spent in the game, 40 years, you learn something every day. Yeah. I mean, you learn something about people, about everything, and this would be a new venue for sandy that he's never been there before and he's really never managed in the minor leagues nope. before so you could say the same thing uh, across the way with robin ventura he had never managed before this year and he took this team uh, to the last week of the season with an opportunity to, to get to the playoffs i'm sure he's learned a lot and has a lot more to learn Danks a swing and a miss, one and one. Mike Pachter researching right to the bitter end this year. The last three homer game in this ballpark. Larry Walker of the Colorado Rockies back in June of 2004. Happened on June 25th of that year. He had some monster seasons with the Rockies. Payoff pitch. And it's ball four, so the inning stays alive. Brings up Ray Olmedo. Stay tuned afterwards tonight for the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care post game show. We'll have the highlights. We will not have the next day's pitching matchup. But we can tell you our next game. As Olmedo lines one to left field for a base hit over to cut it off is Russ Kanzler. Danks in the third. It's a double for Olmedo. Our next game on Sports Time Ohio will be Tuesday, April 2nd from the Rogers Center in Toronto. That's where the Indians will open the 2013 season. Yes, we will. On the road. We opened up uh, this year against Toronto here. That's right. Now that's it for Vinny Pistano. And Sandy Alomar will have to make a pitching change here, and he'll go to Cody Allen with two on, two out in the ninth.
Chicago nine, Cleveland nothing. Ninth inning, two on, two out. Cody Allen will come on for the Indians. There are the White Sox base runners. And Orlando Hudson will be the batter. There's the pitch from Cody Allen, and it's ball one. Swung on and missed, and the count evens a ball and a strike. Now New York is leaving, no doubt. At home tonight, they are crushing Boston 10 to 2 in the seventh. So, There's some big numbers put up tonight. Yeah, Seattle blanked the Angels 12 to nothing. Of course, Oakland beat Texas earlier today 12 to 5 to win the AL West. Hudson sends one on the ground to short, and Cord Phelps will throw him out. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. 9 nothing, Chicago. 